Coming up on 5-Minute News. Joe Biden promises to codify abortion legislation into law. Saudi Arabia sentences US citizen to 16 years over critical tweets. And new data suggests the next pandemic could come from melting glaciers. It's Wednesday, October 19. I'm Anthony Davis. President Joe Biden promised on Tuesday that the first bill he sends to Capitol Hill next year will be one that writes abortion protections into law if Democrats control enough seats in Congress to pass it, as he sought to energize his party's voters just three weeks ahead of the November midterms. Twice over, Biden urged people to remember how they felt in late June when the Supreme Court overturned the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling that legalized abortion, fresh evidence of White House efforts to ensure the issue stays front of mind for Democratic voters this year. He repeatedly lambasted Republicans nationwide who have pushed for restrictions on the procedure, often without exceptions, and told Democrats in attendance that if you care about the right to choose, then you've got to vote. As he has done all year, Biden emphasized that only Congress can fully restore abortion access to what it was before the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs v. Jackson, which overturned Roe. But he also acknowledged we're short of a handful of votes now to reinstate abortion protections at the federal level, urging voters to send more Democrats to Congress. But for Biden to follow through on his pledge, Democrats would have to retain control of the House and pick up seats in the Senate, an unlikely scenario considering current political dynamics. Abortion rights have been a key motivating factor for Democrats this year, although the economy and inflation still rank as chief concern for most voters. An American citizen has been arrested in Saudi Arabia, tortured and sentenced to 16 years in prison over tweets he sent while in the United States, his son said on Tuesday. Sayad Ibrahim Al-Mahdi, a 72-year-old retired project manager living in Florida, was arrested last November while visiting his family in the kingdom and was sentenced earlier this month. Al-Mahdi is a citizen of both Saudi Arabia and the United States. State Department Deputy Spokesman Vident Patel, speaking to reporters in Washington, confirmed Al-Mahdi's detention yesterday. We have consistently and intensively raised our concerns regarding the case at senior levels of the Saudi government, both through channels in Riyadh and Washington, D.C. as well, and we will continue to do so, he said. We have raised this with members of the Saudi government as recently as yesterday. It appeared to be the latest in a series of recent cases in which Saudis received long jail sentences for social media posts critical of the government. Saudi authorities have tightened their crackdown on dissent following the rise of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who is seeking to open up and transform the ultra-conservative kingdom, but has adopted a hard line toward any criticism. A Saudi court recently sentenced a woman to 45 years in prison for allegedly damaging the country through her social media activity. A Saudi doctoral student at Leeds University in England was sentenced to 34 years for spreading rumours and retweeting dissidents, a case that drew international outrage. Ibrahim says his father was detained over 14 mild tweets sent over the past seven years, mostly criticising government policies and alleged corruption. He said his father was not an activist but a private citizen, expressing his opinion while in the US, where freedom of speech is a constitutional right. President Joe Biden travelled to the oil-rich kingdom in July for a meeting with Prince Mohammed, in which he said he confronted him about human rights. Their meeting, and a widely criticised fist bump, marked a sharp turnaround from Biden's earlier vow to make the kingdom a pariah over the 2018 killing of Saudi journalist and Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. New data suggests that the next pandemic may come not from bats or birds, but from matter in melting ice. 
Genetic analysis of soil and lake sediments from Lake Hazen, the largest high Arctic freshwater lake in the world, suggests the risk of viral spillover, where a virus infects a new host for the first time, maybe higher close to melting glaciers. The findings imply that as global temperatures rise, owing to climate change, it becomes more likely that viruses and bacteria locked up in glaciers and permafrost could reawaken and infect local wildlife, particularly as their range also shifts closer to the poles. For instance, in 2016, an outbreak of anthrax in northern Siberia that killed a child and infected at least seven other people was attributed to a heat wave that melted permafrost and exposed an infected reindeer carcass. Before this, the last outbreak in the region had been in 1941. The research, published in Proceedings of the Royal Society B, suggested that the risk of viruses spilling over to new hosts was higher at locations close to where large amounts of glacial meltwater flowed in, a situation that becomes more likely as the climate warms. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health, and climate, delivering independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily.